Hello, my name is Jacob Butman, and I'm a medical student at Boonshoff School of Medicine. Hi, my name is Amber Hussein, and I'm also a medical student at Boonshoff School of Medicine at Wright State University. Today, we're going to be discussing the coronavirus vaccine, debunking some myths, and addressing some fears. But before we get started, I think it would be beneficial for all of us to get on the same page about how a vaccine works. Yeah, so many of us have heard about vaccines, and essentially what a vaccine is, is a tool used in medicine to stimulate our immune system. You see, our bodies are constantly fighting off invaders, including viruses, bacteria, or other little bugs that we may not be able to see. Vaccines are used to stimulate the immune system and essentially prepare the body for something that we haven't yet encountered. That way, if in the future we do encounter it, we are prepared and are able to fight off that invader without getting extremely sick. But for that to be effective, the vaccine needs to be able to be targeted to a specific area on the particle that we want to destroy. And Amber, if you could give us a little bit more information about how vaccines are specific to the coronavirus. Yeah, so I think a lot of us are familiar with the coronavirus particle with all of its little spikes. And those spikes are necessary to invade our body. And so when we target our immune cells towards those spikes, we render the virus unable to infect us. Yeah, and so we've heard a lot about the new technology, the mRNA vaccines. And before we talk um, more in detail about how they work, I'd like to set the stage with a basic understanding of our cells. As we can see from our illustration, our cell has a compartment um, right here in the center that houses our genetic information, also known as DNA. Our cell also has another compartment that houses something called a protein factory or ribosome. That essentially is needed for everyday life and generates the proteins we need to live. You see, when we are going to get a vaccine, you're essentially getting injected with some instructions. Those instructions are put into the cell and come here to the protein factory. As the factory reads the instructions, the spike protein for coronavirus is generated and taken to the outside of the cell and placed on the outside of the cell. That essentially shows our immune cells what the spike protein like, looks like and allows antibodies to be generated towards that spike protein. You know, something I've heard a lot about is whether this vaccine is able to alter your genetic information or is able to be inserted inside of you and stay there. And something I would like to reiterate is the fact that your DNA or genetic information is in a completely separate compartment than where the vaccine is going. Something else I've been hearing a lot about is how quickly these mRNA vaccines came to market. As we know, this is the first mRNA vaccine ever used, and it seemingly came to market pretty quickly. Amber, can you give us a little bit more on the background regarding mRNA vaccines? Yeah, it does seem a little bit quick and almost in record time that this vaccine was made. But I think it should be noted that vaccines, specifically mRNA vaccines, have been in research since the 1990s. And that all the steps that a drug or a vaccine need to take to be approved by the FDA were taken in this case, and that no shortcuts were taken. And in fact, as people get vaccinated today, we are still keeping an eye on safety and efficacy measures. And that's really important, you know, um, to reiterate that no steps have been skipped in this process and are, we are continuing to monitor potential adverse effects from the vaccine. One last thing that I continually hear about is the word herd immunity. What exactly does that mean? Yeah, herd immunity can be a little bit confusing, but I think it's a little bit better explained as an analogy. So I want everyone to take a step back and think about us as vehicles for the virus. And this small particle can't get around the world without some method of transportation. And so now you can kind of see why CDC guidelines and social distancing make sense when it comes to limiting the spread of the virus. So when someone gets vaccinated, you're effectively taking away a vehicle from the coronavirus to use. And when a certain level of people get vaccinated and a certain level of vehicles have been taken away, we've created something called herd immunity. And that's not just good for the person getting vaccinated, it actually helps others as well. 
See, there are people in our communities, whether it be people being treated for cancer with chemotherapy or people that have autoimmune conditions, where their immune systems can't create these antibodies that Jacob was talking about. And so vaccines aren't really an option for them. So when we create herd immunity by getting vaccinated, we're not just helping ourselves, but we're also preventing the spread of the virus to those who can't get vaccinated. Wow, thank you for explaining that. You know, this has been a challenging time for all of us. It's something that we've never experienced before, and the virus has seemingly stayed around for a very long time. But there is light at the end of the tunnel with the vaccine. Um, and something to reiterate is once you get vaccinated, please continue to follow the guidelines, socially distance and wear your mask because we are still learning about the effectiveness of vaccines and their ability to prevent the passing on of the virus. You know, if you would like some more information, please visit the CDC website or state and local government websites regarding protocols for your local area. And we really appreciate you joining us.